Okay, guys, no time to waste. I'm gonna dive right into it because look at what we have already out. The patch notes for season two are released and they're now online. So let's jump right into it. I'm not gonna run the, the trailer because I'm pretty sure everybody's seen it by now, but let's jump right into the patch notes, right? So welcome to Sys Horizon. CNS has introduced a new map, Horizon. It's a glitchy, colorful cityscape that's partially loaded with floating geometric shapes. You'll have plenty to explore and a nighttime mode that glows under a neon sun. I don't know if you guys did did see the trailer but just it, it looks absolutely incredible insane um, the, the the glitch kind of theme they're going for is crazy it's all close quarters so it's, I don't know it's it's looking absolutely crazy we've got power shift power shift is our brand new two team mode it's a casual 5v5 where you'll compete to escort a physical platform through the arena as it rips through anything in its path with short respawn times and the ability to switch contestants on respawn, you'll be able to, to balance your team on the fly as you fight to control the platform and be the first to deliver it across the finish line. So this is basically a type like tug of war type of game. I think we're all gonna go crazy on this one. Plus I saw that you can switch um, any guns or any loadouts while in the game, opposed to all the other modes so far, which means you can kind of like adapt to, to the game and, and just to the craziness that's going on. So I think that's gonna be super cool. Then uh, learn the ropes. So this one, not gonna go too much into details, but they've revamped uh, the training part for new players with more of actual like game type experience uh, based on real player experience, which is gonna be much better than, than what they did originally for season one. Then we have lock and load. So three new guns have been added to our loadouts. Um, if you guys follow my streams, uh, you know we've talked about this extensively. I'm not gonna go too much into details, but for the mid-class, you have the FAMAS, for the light build, you have the 93R, and for the heavy build, the KS-23. Uh, I think they're all pretty much awesome. The only quick insights I can give you on those is that this has been said to be a little difficult because you have no sights on the gun, so I don't know, we'll, we'll have to test it out. 93R is apparently absolutely crazy. Uh, not much recoil, very fast shooting, the time to kill is, is really low, so so this is going to be one of those crazy guns that are going to maybe revamp and put up to par um, the light class with the other classes. And then the KS-23 is basically shooting a slug, which can be a little unreliable, but I mean, let's, let's see, we'll have to test it out uh, as well. The only comment I want to make here, which might be a bit more on the negative side than, uh, than most of the rest of the patch notes that, it, that is coming, is just I feel they could have maybe like switched it up a little. Those three guns seem to be quite in line with, uh, with what you can already see for those three classes, so I don't know. Maybe a FAMAS in the in the heavy class, or or a shotgun in the mid tier, or or the pistol in the in the heavy, whatever it is. A mix of those guns that would have switched up the fun a bit and switched up the 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 loadouts you can already expect for those classes. But but that's fine. We'll we'll see how it goes throughout the season. Then we have joint CNS. We have the new and by the way, just before I get into this, I love the new patch note UI that they're doing here with those little videos everywhere. But we do have new gadgets. Um, so the dematerializer, which is for the mid-tier, this is basically a way to not destroy the walls because they will reappear upon uh, upon the liking of the player, but it kind of like takes off a part of a, of the map uh, upon activation, which I think is going to be crazy to, to like build new strategies and new attacks, maybe even new defenses somehow, like we'll, this will have to get into it, but th that sounds like a, an absolute game changer. We have the gateway on the light class, which this is very much uh, similar to Team Fortress uh, Teleporter or the uh, Wraith um, portal on Apex, which is you throw your grenade once, you throw it on uh, again a second time, and then between the distance between those throws up to 70 meters, if I remember correctly, will create a portal for which you, your teammates, the enemies, but also objects can go there and back. So again, that's gonna like accelerate the way we, we attack or leave uh, or defend, or this is gonna bring a lot of complexity to the game, which is something that's, that's absolutely needed if we wanna bring this up to par for the competitive level. Um, so great news again there. And then for the heavy build, we have the anti-gravity cube, which from my understanding can move players and loose objects in a upward manner. I don't know about this. I'm, I'm quite excited to see how it works in game. I feel like it's a nice way to move the loadouts around, uh, maybe upper floor, like combo this with uh, maybe with the gateway or the dematerializer. Probably can build something absolutely crazy. 
So excited to see how that's going to go. And then finally, uh, probably my favorite out there, uh, the data reshaper. This basically enables the possibility to change objects, uh, grenades, active canisters or even active grenades we i mentioned the grenades so basically like just change the way things are set in the game instantly which is going to break defenses like break those mines that were were such a pain in the past i don't know i feel like this is an absolute game changer in the finals and and this is going to bring the mid class to a, to a whole new level so overall those gadgets are in my opinion absolutely crazy very smart from embark because they're they're very different to what we're used to see and I'm really excited to go to go test them out right after the patch notes. Now let's move on to the battle pass. So I'm not gonna get into too many details. I've released a little video. If you're interested, you can go watch it right after this one, showcasing the, the battle pass and its content. It is now online. You can already go and purchase it if you're interested. I've seen uh, I've seen quite a lot of exciting skins uh, for for any types of of objects or characters in the game, and I think it's 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 actually a very nice um, battle pass compared even to the first one from season one. Then we have better matches. So let's read a bit here. We've given league ranking a major overhaul for season two. This is super exciting. The goal is to provide a much better quality experience when playing in the ranked tournament. You'll get your starting rank based on your first eight rounds, and from there you'll move up and down based on your performance. Contestants can expect to land between bronze and gold at first and climb the ranks from there. As you may know, we need a lot of people and time to test a system like this, blah, blah, blah. They're going to have to tweak it throughout the season. That's perfectly fine. But I'm actually quite happy to see that they're, they're trying to position players better in the ranking because that was obviously one of our of the biggest pain points of uh, of season one. So excited to see how it's going to go. I hope we're not all bronze or not all gold or like, let's see how it goes. There is there's quite a bit of question marks here, but but at least happy to see they're tackling the rank mode to to make it a bit more competitive again. Then a quick one here, the private matches. Um, again, I'm not going to go too much into detail. You can create so you can basically now create private matches to play with your friends without having to go online and and, and face off with those uh, super efficient uh, diamond players so that's a that's a good addition to the game let's see where they take the feature um, but we will get more information as the season goes on and now my boys and girls what we're all waiting for the actual patch notes so I'm gonna run through those quite quickly because as you'll see there, there is quite a bit and I don't want all of you to, to, fall to, to fall asleep so let's jump right into it new abilities and equipment new map we've already talked about this New game show event, same thing. Let's skip through the gadget, weapons, and there you go, balance changes. So, throwables, explosives, and nukes. Stay seated, buckle up, because there's already something huge coming right up. Added diminishing returns on damage from nukes, i.e. throwable objects that carry C4s, breach charges, or mines. For each source of explosive damage, including the throwable and starting with the highest, a damage modifier is applied to each instance in the sequence of 60%, 40%, 30%, and 20%. So I believe, and you're going to see the next few points are going to confirm that, that the nuke era is coming to an end. Not going to lie, I'm quite happy about it, <laughs> playing the mid-class uh, as much as I do. I don't really have that much of an access to the nuke and, and just like... Playing on the on the receiving end of nukes is not always the most exciting thing, so so really happy about that. Gas canisters now immediately start to steer off their direct trajectory, aka wobble, when they have attachments. So I've seen a video on this. This is actually quite strong in the sense that you basically cannot control anything anymore. What they did for the last patch, where they like uh, augmented the the wobble effect beyond a certain point, is now straight from the launch making it kind of very hard to predict. When picking up throwable objects with explosive gadgets attached, i.e. nukes and snukes, said explosive will become unarmed, okay? When the player lets go of the carried object, a rearming timer for the explosive starts. Again, so to, to have, I think that what they're trying to do here is just make it more complicated to use and less efficient. The explosions from C4, breaching charges, and all mines that detonate while unprimed now deal 20% of their original damage. Again, trying to, to bring the end of the era for, for the explosives, which in my opinion is great. Um, it was just too specific to heavy builds. And while I, I'm not saying everything should be balanced out for, for every class, 
just having one class that had such an overwhelming power um, on, on top of the other classes just didn't feel right. Decrease the health value of propane gas tanks from 250 to 120. I'm not exactly sure why they're doing this. Maybe it's to make it easier to, to explode on while firing on them, but I mean, we'll see how that feels in the game. Fix the bug with fuel barrels where they sometimes wouldn't ignite when taking damage, for example, from explosions or bullets. Dev comments and nukes were a hot button issue in season one. The previous tuning made nukes exceed the intended time to kill by a large margin. Since our initial changes weren't substantial enough to alter this tactic, we've added more ways to balance nukes moving forward. So again, I think they're, they're trying to stay politically correct, but what they're trying to say is they realized that nukes were becoming like far too meta and far too at the center of the game. And that was probably not what they were going for initially for with the with the concept of like putting like sticking C fours to canisters, so they're they're just rolling this back as much as possible while leaving the possibility of doing it, but just making it less game breaking and less influential within the, within the game itself. Then toxic gas added a delay to the application of damage. Damage will now start to take 0.5 seconds after the player enters the gas cloud. Added new functionality that causes damage to ramp up gradually over time from 30 HP to 60 HP over two seconds. Increased damage tick interval from 0.1 per tick to 0.3 uh, seconds per tick. Dev comment, we've always intended for the toxic gas to act as an area denial tool. However, because of its immediate high damage and quick dispersal, it has been far too potent. We've made changes to make toxic gas fit the original intention. So that's actually super interesting. Because when I saw that at first, I thought they were like ramping up the gas, uh, the gas canister to make it like an actual weapon. And I was pretty worried that this was going to be the new nuke type of uh, secondary weapon. But from the dev comments, it seems that they're saying that before, uh, that for season one, it was actually already too powerful. And in a sense, I can get where they're coming from because there was some time, some, some attacks you're doing that were fully defended just by like sticking gas canister under the, the cash out points. And I think this kind of gives it a, s a slightly different approach because you cannot like you cannot rely as the defender on the poison gas to to defend your your cash out. That being said, I'm curious to see how how it goes with when the once the HP counter is brought to the maximum because before you could you could at least maintain the player's health by healing him, making it possible to, to actually steal a cash out. Um, now we're gonna be passing that limit, which means that if you're under fire, it's probably gonna be very difficult to stay alive. And I'm a little worried that this might make it counterproductive towards what they're saying. Um, so again, we'll, we'll have to test it out, uh, but that's a huge change that we're gonna have to, to start to learn to play with. Then for gadgets, the C4, uh, decreased ammo count from two to one, that's already huge. Decreased cooldown from 45 seconds to 30. Decreased minimum damage at the edge of the explosion from 93 to 75. So I think again, uh, the era of explosives is coming to term. Um, obviously here they're, they're absolutely killing the gadgets and it's from being a staple in, in every uh, heavy loadout, this is probably gonna be a much more of an option now. So they're, they're taking the cooldown down from 45 seconds to 30, but that doesn't really change the fact that you now have only access to one C4 instead of two. And if you guys can remember, um, I, I don't remember the exact damage count, but it, one C4 would not kill players, except if you were light build, I think, or barely. I'm not even sure about the light build, but definitely um, now you don't have the choice to put two, except if you have two heavies. Um, and even then, if you're putting those two C4s on canisters, the, the wobble effect is going to be so strong, you probably cannot aim it uh, at the targeted team. On top of that, and I'm not sure it's mentioned anywhere, so I'll, I'll just say it quickly. I've seen videos where you can actually see that the C4X trigger is much slower to be activated than before. So you cannot like put your C4 in the canister, throw the canister and straight away explode in the face of the enemy. It actually has to like go through some distance before you can trigger it, which basically means that now heavies will no longer be able to use C4 canisters or nukes uh, at short distances. Defibrillator added functionality that causes revived players to gradually rematerialize into the level over a period of three seconds before fully loading back into the arena. So that's a huge, huge, huge change that they're bringing to the game. If I'm being honest, I, I can 
can't say I'm I'm overly excited about this because I I did love like any mid class uh, the instant uh, respawn. But if we're being fully honest, for the balancing of the game, it does feel like a very fair revamp. I'm just worried about the three seconds because that that is quite a long time when you're under pressure or in the middle of an action. But basically, the way it works is you can still trigger instantaneously your revive, but the the revive itself is going to take up to three seconds. So hopefully, um, hopefully that's not going to break the speed of the game. But that feels like a fair fair update and will avoid the triple mid uh, meta that we saw for, for quite a long time on season one. Increased charge up time from 06 to 08 and increased starting health from a defibrillator revive from 40% to 50. I, I don't know if that changes too much. 06 to 08 is, is quite short. I, I'm excited to test it out. I don't know if we'll feel it too much, but I mean, the, the big one is definitely this one for sure. Then the dome shield decreased maximum duration from 20 to 12 seconds. So that's actually funny. Um, I did in the back of my mind, I don't know if, uh, about you guys, but it did feel in the back of my mind sometimes that if you're not shooting the dome down, it's just gonna stay there forever. And now that I see the 20 seconds, it kind of like makes me realize why this felt this way. So I'm, I'm quite happy to see they're putting it down to 12 seconds, meaning you don't like, you won't actually have to focus on destroying the dome in every single case. You can just let it run out uh, and focus on something else. So that's that's interesting too, but quite a strong uh, nerf again to the heavy class. Then jump pad, increased cooldown from 25 seconds to 30 seconds, uh, probably trying to balance out the game. I'm not sure if that has much of an effect because 25 seconds was not too long, but 30 is, is roughly the same. I don't know, I'll, I'll see how it goes. The thing is, I'm not sure if this is a smart idea because I think jump pads are a great addition to the game and the fact that they can be used infinitely by your team but also by the enemy team means that this, this wasn't an OP uh, gadget in my opinion and it brings access to the verticality of the game which just increases the speed of things. I don't know, I feel like this, this wasn't fully necessary. Let's see how it feels in the game once, uh, once we play it out. Then motion sensor moved from the light archetyped to the heavy. Okay, so there's a lot of changes to the recon type approach. Actually, even mid-tier is being completely removed from any type of, of sensor, which why not? But I'm not exactly sure what that's gonna have in terms of effect in the game. But yeah, so we have um, the motion sensor moved to the light, light type, the sonar grenade moved from the medium to the light as well, and the tracking dart moved from the medium to light also, uh, let's run through this and then I'll check the RPG. Decreased dispersion in most movement states by 50%. Increased accuracy by decreasing dart dispersion while aiming downsides from 30 to 10% and added force feedbacks for controller. Okay, that's, I think what they're trying to do here is to actually make the tracking dart viable. I'm still not sure if that's gonna change much because I don't think it was the effects of the tracking dart that were wrong. It's more like the, the time it takes you to actually like track a person and then shoot him that doesn't feel like it, it grants much uh, even if you can see him through walls i don't know um, at high level and high speed intensity i'm not sure if this is still uh, any good but maybe with the speed of light builds maybe that brings something so i don't know we'll have to see, to see how it feels as well uh, back to the rpg fixed an issue that made dispersion almost identical regardless of what state the player was in i'm not exactly sure what they mean by what state the player was in so I, I'm not sure what they're referring to here, but let's let's leave it for now. Increased projectile dispersion in all non-naming states. So again, I think that's that's similar approach, but I, I I don't know what they mean by those states. Reduced projectile dispersion when aiming down sights. Okay. Increased zoom in time from 02 to 04. Increased equip time from 045 to 05, and increased in equip time from 03 to 04. So again, um, similar as with the C4 approach. They're trying to kill explosives and, and any source of explosives visibly. So just uh, this is probably going to make it feel much slower, much like harder to, you know, like to move around. So yeah, probably putting this back uh, in the cupboard. Then what do we have? Then we have the vanishing bomb increased grace period on teammates from 0.75 to 125. That is actually a big, big increase. Increased total cloaked duration on teammates from 6 to 7.5 and increased to 
uh, total cloak duration on the user from five to six seconds. So they're actually putting the vanishing bomb at the center of the meta from what I see, because that those three combined are a big ramp up for the vanishing bomb. And if we're being completely honest, it did feel a bit difficult to use, especially on your teammates uh, in season one, because to calibrate exactly when to use it while you have the chance to, have, to hit uh, your entire team was a bit difficult uh, seeing the speed of the game. So maybe increasing by by 1.5 seconds for the for the teammates is a, is a good way to go. Again, we'll have to see in game. Then specializations, reconsensus, removed for assessment. I think that's great. Uh, this was a very weird gadget to be in the game. We've concluded that reconsensus have been detrimental to the game at large and have decided to put it out of play for now. The specialization may return in some new form down the line, but only after a major rework. I think we're not going to be seeing it for, for, for quite a while, if if not ever. I don't really see how, how this can bring any real value to the game, like seeing through what is just weird sometimes you know i'm sure every one of you guys have felt it but like you're just like you're going into somewhere and the guy already knows you're coming in you just get smacked before you've even passed the door just doesn't feel right so i think that's a great thing i just hope we'll have something to to compensate fair the mid class seems quite strong for for season two so i'm sure it will be fine but yeah i think that's a great thing then, Mesh Shield, increased cooldown on a fully depleted shield from 12 seconds to 15 seconds and increased starting health after full depletion from 200 to 250, making it stronger. I think that's a great thing. The, the heavy build is going to need some defenses, especially with the new gadgets. Weapons, AKM, decreased damage fall off minimum range from 35 to 30, decreased damage fall off max range from 40 to 37.5, decreased damage fall off modifier at max range from 67 to 55%. I'm actually quite curious as to why they're buffing the AKM that much. Probably people People were going for the F car um, far more than the AK, but I think it was a question of positioning. Like the the AK had more bullets, but just a little less. Uh, sorry, a little more recoil. The F car had more precision, but you did lose quite a bit of bullets. So I I don't know if it was worth ramping it up that much. But uh, I don't know. That's that sounds exciting. I'm actually really excited to test it out. If it feels like the F car failed for season one, but on top of having the bullets, that, that's going to be a very strong gun. And the F car as well is getting a buff, uh, decreased damage fall off modifier at max range from 67% to 55%. Same thing, I'm very curious as to why the F car is getting a buff. It was already a very good gun. Um, as an F car user, I, I cannot lie, I'm, I'm pretty excited to test this out in game. And plus, I've, I've seen uh, really good feedback on the F car for the season. Season two. So yeah, this is probably going to make the F car at the center of the meta. Uh, I would at least expect that um, for the mid build. Then Lewis gun updated weapon recall pattern to be slightly less accurate over time during sustained firing. This is great because there was another problem with season one is that the heavy build was just far too strong on the attack side, considering the tank aspects of the heavy build, which is supposed to be defensive. Um, we actually had a long period, uh, if not till the end of season one, where heavy class was destroying players. I've seen 50 kills on a single on a single guy in, in some games. So I don't know. This this feels kind of fair to me. I know most of you heavy players are gonna are gonna quite complain about this one because it is one of those staple guns of the class. Let's see in game how much more recoil we're getting. But this, in my own own self opinion, this feels like a, a fair nerf to the gun. Then the M11 increased accuracy by decreasing bullet dispersion from firing from the hip. Fair enough. M60 updated weapon recoil pattern to be slightly more accurate over time during sustained firing. Increased accuracy by decreasing bullet dispersion while moving when firing from the hip, increased accuracy by decreasing bullet dispersion while moving when firing while aiming down sights, and decreased accuracy slightly by increased bullet dispersion while standing still when firing while aiming down sights. That sounds like a lot of updates and a lot of rework to the gun. Uh, they're not putting percentages, so I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm quite questioned on, on the M60. Let's see how it feels in game. Um, we're we're going to have to test it out as well. Then the R357, the revolver everybody likes to put in their cupboard because nobody can use it. Increased damage fall off modifier at max range from 33% to 45%. That makes it far stronger. That's a 12% increase in, in damage at max range. Um, not going to lie, that, that is a 
very big buff. Um, that being said, I still feel like the gun is quite difficult to use. There is, from my tests, and you've seen it in one of my videos in the past, um, there is no recoil, depending on the speed at which you fire, which that is quite a unique characteristic to the gun. So maybe with the uh, ramped up damage at max range, this becomes some kind of like unique one-shot sniper type approach. So let's see, I don't know, I hope it will be an option one day. If not yet, it's probably, they seem to be buffing it as much as they can as the time, as the weeks go by. So let's see where they're going with this, but it could be a, it could become soon a, a good option for, for the mid-class. Then throwing knives, increased projectile speed from 100 meters per second to 138 meters per second. Uh, I don't know about this. I know the throwing knives were not used by basically anyone. I don't know if it was because of the speed of the projectiles. I, I feel like those unique players that mastered that type of weapon wouldn't be complaining about the speed. I'm, I'm not sure, like I, I haven't played it much, so I, I don't want to give a, an opinion that would be biased, but this feels very strong. 18 meters added per second that might make the throwing knives totally broken and I don't know if I want to see a finals game where throwing knives are, are in the meta. So that would probably feel very weird and very difficult to play against. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see, but this is a weird point to me. They probably had different things they could have changed before going for the speed, so we'll see. And then the XP54 as the last weapon modification. We have decreased accuracy by increased bullet dispersion when firing from the hip in most, most movement states. Um, okay, so little... Uh, accuracy decrease. To be fair, this gun was probably the most stable gun in the game at the moment. So seeing a bit more of recoil kind of feels fair. I hope it doesn't break the gun because it was a very nice and fun gun to play with. But yeah. Now let's get on to the equipment mastery. Uh, added new levels with rewards to the following equipment items. We're not going to run through the whole list. I think you can all see. Basically, I would say most of the guns, if not all, have been added uh, some levels so you can have rewards onto them. I think that's great, but kind of expected for a season. Same with the gadgets. Uh, if not all, most of them are. And then specialization, goo gun, healing beam, and guardian turrets have also had some new levels added. Then in the gameplay, added an option for auto sprinting in the gameplay section in settings. You can turn on auto sprinting in the settings menu and select the time it takes for your contestants to begin sprinting. The finals has a unique omnidirectional sprinting system, which means characters can sprint in all directions instead of the more common forward only sprint. As such, we'd love to get your feedback on auto sprinting and what additional settings would help you better customize your sprinting experience. So this, we're definitely gonna be testing it out, probably even making a whole video about it because an omnidirectional sprinting system sounds pretty cool. That being said, um, I don't know, we're, we're all used to the one way forward sprint, so I don't know how it would feel to have a different direction. And I wouldn't want to lose precision because of mines and traps uh, being very present in the game. You wouldn't want to like, you know, like just barely touching your, your sprint movement uh, or direction and suddenly like going too fast into something you're not controlling. So we'll have to check it out. They do say you can, uh, you can personalize the time before it starts sprinting, but then again, um, that feels like a very game design type of intel that most players wouldn't have, as in like, is one second too long you know, or is it far too slow? Is 0.1 second far too fast? Like it's, it's quite difficult to tweak, but I'm not going to complain with more added customization because that's, that just gives a better player experience. So we'll have to test it out um, and I'll probably make some kind of like tips uh, video once I have had the chance to test it. So please don't miss it. Um, keep the notification button on. And then let's move on. The preview arc for Grenade now shows where they will detonate in their trajectory. That is absolutely awesome. We will now not only know exactly where the grenade is going to go, but we'll, it also shows a little indicator of an explosion where on the, uh, on the trajectory it's exactly going to explode. And I think that's really cool considering the speed of the game and, uh, and the fact that just for now frag grenades not that it's limited to frag grenades, but frag grenades were kind of like not at the top of their game, of their game, um, and because they were quite quite unreliable, and I think this is gonna bring them back into the meta. And then improved an issue where controller players would unintentionally drop carried objects when trying to interact. Now carried objects won't be dropped when pressing the interact and equip button, a equip weapon button if the weapon is already equipped. Good bug fixes. General, fixed an issue where the scoreboard would not show the potential score for transfer in progress. 
Haven't seen that happen, but I guess it's, it's good. Fixed an issue with flamethrower kills sometimes being attributed as self-elimination due to the flamethrower user being eliminated. Good. That would probably be very raging as a flamethrower user uh, if you don't get your, your kills counted for you. Then fixed dome and mesh shield not blocking projectile and explosions correctly. This again, I'm quite surprised to see that. I, I have not had the issue in season one, but definitely a good thing. Um, if there was this bug, it should be it should be fixed. You need to be able to rely on your on your shield. Fix broken interactions on the crane. Um, here again, not too precise as to what they mean by broken interaction. Is it like the climbing that was a bit dodgy when you were on the cr on the crane, or is it like the top highest part of the crane that has holes but you can't climb through them? Um, not sure yet. We'll, we'll have to test that out. Fixed an issue that allowed players to steal objectives through floors and walls. That has actually happened to me a couple of times, and it is very weird. So I'm I'm so happy they they were aware of it and already fixed it because the I mean it breaks the whole concept of defending your point when you're suddenly getting robbed through a wall and you cannot attack the guy because you don't even know that he's here. Fixed an issue with where flashbang effect were not shown for a spectating player, fixed an issue where explosive objects attached to another object would fall off if the primary object was destroyed, the explosive objects detached will now also take appropriate damage in this situation, okay? Fixed an issue where melee swings could damage occluded structures, for example destroying the outside walls from inside an elevator, I didn't even know that was a thing, but good. Fix an issue on controllers where you would drop your held item if you press the primary weapon button while the primary weapon was equipped. Fix an issue where minor props like chairs and tables sometimes did not get affected by explosives. Fix a bug where the mesh shield regen would fail to start correctly. Fix bug where radial damage falloff was incorrectly calculated for carryables and props. Fix a bug where all barrels would not start burning from specific damage events. Okay, all those, I think all those are great. They're, they're just gonna make the game feel much better, much smoother, and, and just like in line with what they're trying to go for. So um, all of this is great news in my books. Then regarding animation, fixed an issue where melee animation would look wrong when affected by status effects. Fixed an issue where dagger animation wouldn't play correctly. Add a new fronted idle animation for squad members equipped with LH1. Fix the T-pose bug when players would use the sword launch and swap items at the same time. Fix the bug for the 1887 Doe Wrangler skin where the left hand would pop up on the screen when shooting while crouching. Fix the bug that caused floating items to appear when riddling zip lines. Fix the bug where melee swings happening at the end of mantling would skip the animation. Fix the bug where the character's arms would clip each other when wielding throwing knives. And uh, fix the bug where ADS specific weapons handling would play outside of ADS. I haven't personally had any of those, but I mean, if they're there, they're similar to, to the section here. This is just going to make the game feel better. So that's a great thing to see. Then moving to game modes, improved spawn selection around active objectives. That is awesome and i cannot believe they've already patched it it was becoming a bit of an of a problem um if you've played the game enough you know where the spawns are and if you know where the spawns are some of them on specific points around i would say any map to be fair you could kind of anticipate where the players are were going to be and start like preparing the attack even before they came in since you can't see the timer of the respawn so this this just felt a bit unfair for the responding team. So this is I think is a great addition. I'm excited to see how the how it modifies the game, but on on paper this looks great to me. Fixed issue where players could push opposing teams to spawn unfavorable by not inserting the cash box. That is also something I didn't know it was considered an issue. I've used it myself where I would tell my teammates just wait for them to respawn before you put it in. Because if you don't, they would uh, basically the respawn would be different depending of who, on whether the cash in the cash out was in or not. So I guess that's that's a good thing. That's a technique we're gonna have to remove our of our books if they consider it an issue. Then fix for case where two squads spawning at the same frame could use the same spawn points. I've heard that happening to some of the players I play with. That's that's just not okay. So that's that's a great fix. Then moving to levels, new and improved algorithm for map selection to ensure you rarely see the same map multiple times in a row, leaving matches will not affect the outcome of the selection. I think that is 
absolutely amazing. I've had the feeling where sometimes like I do streams every single day. Um, most of them are around three hours and I've had evenings where I would play two hours on Las Vegas uh, and it just felt a bit annoying. Sometimes I've seen Skyward uh, five times in a row. I, I didn't know that was something they could work on. I thought it was just randomized, but that's, that's a great thing to see. Improved lightning on nighttime Monaco, great. Reduced wind movement on vegetation in Las Vegas. Fixed issue where multiple level objects were overlapping each other. Fixed issue with some materials in the end of round celebration being drawn behind the team logo. Improved debris handling, letting it settle before being removed. And improved lightning on sable fog and storm settings. Great, some more smoothability in our game. Then in art, a small little fix bug with glint tint skin not looking great. Okay, I'm not sure what that means exactly for this skin, but I guess they know what they're talking about. And then audio, added voice lines for reloading, improved footsteps audio for players using pistols, fixed a bug where objective pings would not play the correct audio, fixed a bug where match commentary would play in the practice range, and added sounds for squad mate down and the last player standing. I think this plus this is great. This I'm a little perplexed. I hope it doesn't completely make the pistol OP, because if, if by wielding a pistol you can kind of like hear everybody all around the map or, or to whatever extent of the distance it is that would make it a little broken so we'll we'll have to see but let's hope it's not too much it is fair that some pistols are quite loud so they probably like ramped it up a little i don't know we'll have to see and then finally the ui ux player cards are introduced in the finals these will be generated from your character customization and your chosen intro animation added the final spinner to previously black screens when loading, added a new item gadget tutorial videos, improved camera placement and framing for charms, fixed so that your squad is center in the tournament lineup intros and outros, that's great because sometimes it was just weird, improved respawn timer feedback on teammate icons and improved feedback on the press start respawn mechanics. Awesome, a lot of good little things but a ton of good big things as well. Um, I don't know what you guys think, I'd love to hear your comments uh, so please don't hesitate to go down in the comment section to discuss this but in any case don't hesitate to come join us just to have an overall chat about the the entire season two, what we're gonna have to, to be playing with, the changes, the updates, the new maps, the new modes. Um, it's all open for debates. I'm very excited to hear what you guys have to say about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And the only thing that remains to be said is that I will see you on the next one.